Hello, my name is Manuel Kepler and I'm with the German Aerospace Center DLR. Today I will present my work on time optimal control of elastic joints under input constraints. This was a collaboration with Alessandro De Luca from La Sapienza University. For many robotic applications, achieving fast motions between two points is crucial. It requires the exploitation of the maximum allowable actuator torques. In this work, we present a closed form solution to the following time optimal control problem. Given an elastic joint with a linear spring that connects the motor and link inertia, let us assume that we face symmetric input constraints and that we want to move the link from point A to point B from rest to rest in minimum time. The question is, how do we have to choose our control policy to achieve this goal? Let us start with an interesting observation. In classical mechanics, the two-body problem predicts the motion of two masses that exert a force on each other. One prominent example is the gravitational case, also known as the Kepler problem. Looking at two celestial bodies orbiting each other and looking at the motion of an elastic joint, we see that in both cases we have a central force field that underlies the mutual attraction and dictates the relative motion. It is well known that the Kepra problem can be treated in an elegant fashion by reducing it to a pair of one-body problems by exploiting symmetries. This inspired me to apply the same techniques to simplify the analysis of an elastic joint. Since the concept of symmetries is so fundamental to our work, I want to give a really brief recap. Loosely speaking, given some system, we can think of a symmetry as a physical or mathematical feature that is preserved or remains unchanged under some transformation. But why are symmetries so interesting in physics? It all goes back to Emmy Noether, who stated in her famous theorem that every symmetry is associated with the conservation law. For example, rotational symmetry gives rise to the conservation of angular momentum. Space translation symmetry gives rise to the conservation of momentum and time translation symmetry gives rise to the conservation of energy. I will not go in details here, however, knowing that the elastic system has a rotational or translational symmetry, depending on whether we consider a rotational or linear joint, allowed us to introduce a change of coordinate that decouples the system. Instead of using motor and link position as generalized coordinates, we introduced the joint deflection and center of mass position as new coordinates. Looking at the decoupled system, we may think of one body as a free-floating particle of mass m, where m is the total mass of the joint. The second body may be considered as a particle of mass mu that oscillates about the fixed force center where mu is usually called the reduced mass. Here it is important to note that both masses are subject to the same external force u, which is our control input. The input force on the oscillating mass, however, is scaled by a dimensionless parameter mu. Are there any other symmetries we may exploit? Interestingly, given a constant input, the elastic system is invariant to time reversal. This time symmetry turns out to be extremely helpful for constructing the phase space trajectories of the decoupled system. Again, I have to refer to our paper for detailed arguments. So what are the key ideas underlying our solution to the time optimal control problem? Instead of dealing directly with the force order dynamics of an elastic joint, we consider the separate motions of two equivalent masses, the free-floating total mass and the oscillating reduced mass. This means constructing a time-optimal rest-to-rest motion requires us to synchronize the motion of two masses in two separate phase spaces that are subject to the same input, just with the different scaling. Since we consider rest-to-rest -rest motions, the system must start and end its motion with zero joint deflection. This means the corresponding motion of the oscillating mass must start and end at the origin of the phase plane. 
In contrast, the free floating particle whose position encodes the COM position of the system must start its phase space motion at the origin but must end it at the desired link position. From the mathematical point of view, the free floating mass is nothing but a double integrator system that is subject to a bounded input. The time optimal control solution to this system is well known and is simply a bang bang input with a single switching. This suggested that we should look among the class of bang bang controllers to achieve time optimal motions for the synchronization problem. Finally, by moving into the complex plane, we can reformulate the problem of finding time optimal phase space trajectories into a purely geometric problem. How do the phase space motions of the oscillating mass look like under bang bang control? First of all, by introducing the natural time tau, the elliptical orbits become circular. The natural time is obtained by scaling the real time with the natural frequency of the oscillating mass. By moving into the complex plane, it is straightforward to show that moving forward in time always corresponds to clockwise motions on these orbits. The centers of these circular orbits are defined by the system parameters and input bounds, and those are fixed. By switching the input, the point that encodes the system state transfers to a circular orbit that is centered in the opposite half plane. Further, the sum of all the angles covered in the phase plane is always equal to the total natural time duration of a given trajectory. Last, time symmetry tells us that time optimal solutions must be symmetric with respect to the imaginary axis. Applying this geometric method of constructing phase space trajectories allowed us to identify two families of time optimal rest to rest motions. The most basic one is obtained by a bang bang policy that requires just a single input switch. We spend half the time with maximum positive control input and the remaining half with maximum negative control input. The corresponding phase space motion of the oscillating mass is shown in the middle. The COM velocity over time is given to the right. This image provides a geometrical link to the final link displacement. The blue area under a given center of mass curve is precisely the distance covered by the elastic joint in a rest-to-rest -rest motion. We can observe there exists an infinite number of such solutions. In fact, we may cover n circular orbits with maximum acceleration and n orbits with maximum deceleration. We refer to all these instances as natural motions. Each natural motion leads to a distinct link displacement and applying basic geometry allows us to determine the final reach position as a function of number of full acceleration orbits as shown in the top right corner. Note that the achievable final link positions are countable and do not cover the entire set of real numbers. In other words, we cannot reach arbitrary link displacements via natural motions. The areas in between the achievable link displacements are filled by the second class of time optimal trajectories. The second family of time optimal motions is characterized by a bang bang control policy with three input switchings. We switch between two phases of maximum positive control input and maximum negative control input each. Again, the total displacement is given by the area under the curve of the center of mass velocity over time. Angle alpha 1 denotes the first switching time. As we show in our paper, through geometrical reasoning, the remaining two switching times are uniquely determined by the first switching time. Here we see a comparison of the time optimal rest to rest motions for an elastic joint and its rigid counterpart that is, when the joint stiffness approaches infinity. 
The plots show the natural time that is required for a given desired center of mass displacement for the elastic joint in red and for the rigid joint in blue. One can immediately see for all but the natural motion cases indicated by blue arrows the minimum time needed for a rest to rest motion realizing a desired displacement of the center of mass is always larger in the elastic case in comparison to the rigid case. However, the differences tend to vanish for longer displacement as well as for increasing joint stiffness values. The reason for this is quite intuitive. The gaps in between CUM displacement that cannot be achieved by a natural motion in a time optimal fashion require two additional input switchings to synchronize the free floating and oscillating mass. This additional necessity for synchronization translates into the fact that for rest to rest motions, elastic joints are slower in most situations compared to their rigid joint counterparts. In conclusion, we solved the time optimal rest to rest motion problem for elastic joints under input bounds. The solutions are provided in closed form and were obtained from purely geometric considerations. Further, we introduced the concept of natural motions. As shown in our paper, the proposed solutions satisfy standard optimality conditions. The proposed geometrical framework provides valuable insight into the rest-to-rest -rest motion problem, and we want to use this insight to derive guidelines on how to optimally design an elastic joint.